Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member, Director Dettelback. Did I get it right? You absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you for being here today, and congratulations on your confirmation. I think it's essential for the leadership of any agency to have a permanent and uh, Senate-affirmed uh, director, and I know you've only been on for a short while, so congratulations for that, and I think, uh, you know, no matter how I feel about uh, the ATF, it is important for leadership purposes for the direction uh, of your agency to be clear and stable. So. As a foundational question, and I don't play stump the chump, I'm not out to get uh, on a news bite, but I have some questions for you as the director that I'd like to understand about where you are personally. I've seen it read that in 2018 when you ran for attorney general that you said that all assault weapons should be banned. Is that a, is that a fair statement? Um, I don't. I certainly said that I was in that political campaign, which is far different from where I am now, although the administration's position is that there should be an assault weapons ban, to be clear. But um, I think what I said was that, that, that there should be uh, a, an assault weapons ban. I, I think it would have been up to the Ohio legislature mm -hmm. to try and determine, and it's hard work to determine what things are and are not covered, how you define those terms. That would have been my view, I, and a, as with, with, with any, uh, legislative body, they get to to make those uh, okay. determinations. But uh, if you agreed with that, uh, as a gun owner uh, of many different types and a 20-year military veteran, I have some expertise in weaponry uh, and self-defense weapons. What could you, in 15 seconds, would you define an assault weapon for me? So, so if you go after past 15 seconds, I'll just interrupt you. Yeah, so. So, so I'll go shorter than that because I, I honestly, I do think that's a, if Congress wishes to take that up, I think Congress would have to do the work. But we would be there to provide technical assistance. I, unlike you, I'm not a firearms expert to the same extent as you may be, but we have people at ATF who can talk about uh, uh, velocity of firearms, what damage different kinds of firearms cause, so that whatever determination you, you chose to make would be an informed one. Did you go to Harvard Law School? Um, I might have to plead okay. guilty. Right. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so, so the follow-up question is: As we've discussed, that uh, we're losing uh, wartime numbers of Americans to to fentanyl coming across the border, a border that is uh, that is porous. It doesn't matter the definition that you use of it. What that looks like, come as you said, they go hand in hand. Drugs are coming across. Guns are coming across. We have a gang problem in this country. How does ATF? plan on fighting the gang issue because I see you shutting down a whole lot of, of uh, federal firearms dealers. What are you doing in Chicago to shut down the gang violence in Chicago? Uh, so, so we do a lot. So we are out there partnering with state and local law enforcement on task forces, on anti-gang efforts all over the, the nation. Uh, more than we have great other federal law enforcement agencies, but I'm very proud and I saw this as a, as a prosecutor for all those years. The culture at ATF is more to stand shoulder to shoulder in the streets, in the trenches with, with state and local law enforcement on these cases because we're the violent crime focus, right? And, and that is in our constitutional system. State and locals have the lead most of the time on that. So we work all the time on those. We have done, uh, I mean, outlaw motorcycle gang cases, uh, Latin kings, crips, bloods, almost every gang you can imagine. And that's just since I have gotten here and multiple times. We work, on, we work on those cases. It's a very important problem, you are correct. Do you have undercover agents, and if so, do we have some in south of our border in cooperation? Uh, so I, I'm not gonna comment on any undercover activities we may or may not have. Of course, ATF, like all law enforcement agencies, has an undercover function, but mm -hmm. we're very, very careful about making sure we never say anything that would put somebody in danger. I understand that uh, as a military man, but, uh, but I, I do want to point out, you know, as, as I have a problem, and so many people uh, on my side of the aisle do with the ATF existing at all because of overreach, uh, the NDB, you've lost thousands of weapons at the NDB prior to your time, I like to add, uh, and from 2016 to 2019, very lax security standards at the NDB, National Disposal Bureau, right? Uh, and thousands of weapons that got stolen and then recirculated because there was no, no uh, proof of them being sold anywhere. I'd like to know how the NDB has been cleaned up specifically since you took over. So I think f first, you know, nobody is more keenly aware of the, of the issues at NDB than ATF because agents had to go out into the field and, and 
you know, do the hard and sometimes dangerous work of recovering the vast majority of those weapons, which, by the way, they did, not all, but the vast majority. In terms of the, uh, the corrections, of course, the Inspector General's report comes up with specific <coughs> recommendations, yeah. um, and, and we have worked very hard to adopt and implement those recommendations. I just think that if there's going to be a no-fault mentality from this administration and the ATF concerning loss of weapons from, uh, from how you sell them to uh, anything else, that the same no-fault mentality should be held to the ATF standard. My time has expired. Thank you very much, sir. Time of the gentleman has expired.